come over here at my sanding station and uh, again what I'm going to do is start the sander up and with this table set at 90 degrees I'm going to bring this block up there and I'm just going to slowly take off material and I'll probably do it on both sides just to smooth everything out a little bit and uh, what I'm going to do is take a little off put the quarter in it test for fit and uh, then we'll eventually get it to where it'll be nice and snug. You don't want to go too far before you test the fit of the quarter. So I've got my quarter now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hold these two halves together, set my quarter in on the ledge, and make sure that when I apply pressure that that quarter is good and tight. And uh, just that little bit we took off at the sander has already got it where I want it. So um, you don't want to go too far because that way you can come back if the quarter does ever start to indent on this a little bit. You can come back and take a little more off. I've got the two halves of my clamp back over here at the... Uh, workbench and I want to point out a couple things to you that uh, can be kind of important depending on how you plan on cutting out your, uh, uh, your coins. This lip right here uh, determines how close to the edge of the coin you're going to be able to get your scroll saw blade. So if you really want to cut real close to the rim you may have to sand this inner lip down just a little bit uh, so your blade can get closer to the edge. Uh, and you can use a spindle sander or even just sand it by hand until you get this down as thin as you can. All you need there is just enough of a lip to hold the quarter up. And now what we're going to do is when we put this together, we can drop our coin in there now, and we can go ahead and take our clamp uh, from our 3D cutting jig, place it around the clamp, go ahead and tighten the clamp, the 3D cutting jig clamp down, and we're basically ready to cut at that point. Now, the next step in this is to take a look at your quarter and, or whatever coin you decide to make this jig for. And you want to go ahead and plan now uh, what you're going to cut out. So what we're going to do is drill you know, whatever entry holes we need at the drill press. And in this case, in this little demo, I'm just going to do a simple one. All I'm going to do is uh, cut out the head uh, here and um, I might leave the uh, date down here at the bottom uh, and then at the top I'll leave just a little space right here at the very top uh, where we'll be able to drill a hole uh, for the uh, uh, chain to go through and I'll show you how we're going to do that when we get done. So I'm going to take this coin over to the drill press, go ahead and drill an entry hole. In this case I'll probably drill, drill two holes. I'm going to drill one over here in the front of the face and one right here at the top which will be the uh, chain hole. Over here at the scroll saw now and I want to show you what I did. I did go ahead and put three entry holes in this coin. I've got one at the top, which will be the length for the chain, and I've got one on each side. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the front of the face down to the date, and in the back of the head I'm going to start at the date, cut around the back of the head, and I'm going to leave a pretty good little piece of metal right here at the top of the coin uh, to put the chain link in. So I've gone ahead and uh, installed uh, a number two jeweler's blade and uh, that's the somewhat larger blade that I'm going to use to cut out this uh, this coin because I'm not going to get re de real detailed. Now uh, as you get more practice with this you can actually go in and cut out the individual numbers in the date. You could cut out the individual letters in the word liberty. You can really get detailed but uh, for this video we're not going to take it quite that far. I've gone ahead and installed a number two jeweler's blade in the top uh, chuck here of the scroll saw. and In this case, feeding uh, the blade up from the bottom would be really difficult. So I'm going ahead and clamp it in the top. I'm going to feed it down through one of my entry holes and then I'll take it down under the table and go ahead and clamp it into the bottom. Uh, it's just going to make this whole process a whole lot easier to clamp from the top. I've got the blade pierced through the uh, hole in front of the face here on this quarter and I'm going to go ahead and begin this cut. and. Uh, when you're cutting coins, sometimes you have to back up and uh, you know take the blade in places that you may not want to try to make the turn. Again, like we talked about in the last video, these jeweler's blades are very fine, especially once you get up to like a number eight, and they break really easy. So you want to be as easy on these blades as you can. You want to turn the speed down quite a bit, and you don't want to put them in too much stress, more stress than you have to. And uh, we'll go ahead and start this cut. And you can notice that I've got the speed turned down really slow. 
And uh, I'm going to go ahead and start underneath the nose here. Oh, one more thing that I forgot. Uh, I am going to go ahead and put on uh, these head mounted magnifying glasses. Uh, you can find these in hobby stores and things. But uh, to cut these quarters uh, at my age, I need the extra help. So uh, if you have trouble seeing your cuts, go ahead and get you a pair of these magnifying glasses and it'll make things a lot easier. Okay, I've cut underneath the nose, now I'm going to take it down and around the mouth, back up and around the chin, down the forehead, and we're going to cross the bridge of the nose. And you really want to slow down here when you get to this, uh, where you're going to hit the original line, because these things jump sometimes and break the blades. And there it popped right out. Okay, so there's the uh, front half of the coin cut, and you can see that actually went pretty easy. Uh, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and stop the video to keep from boring you to death, and I'll cut the other side out, and then uh, we'll work on the finished project back over at the uh, workbench when I finish this cut. Uh, I've got the uh, project back over here at the workbench now. I want to mention a couple things as you're uh, cutting this out. Um, you might occasionally have to retension this clamp a little bit. Uh, the vibration sometimes will loosen it up and you don't want it flying out on you. So every once in a while just check the tension, make sure it's still good and tight. And uh, another thing uh, that I forgot to mention while we were at the uh, scroll saw is this quarter will build up a lot of heat um, from the cutting, the friction of the cutting. So when you first uh, finish this, go ahead and leave it in the clamp and let it cool off for a couple of minutes before you grab it because it, it's uh, hot enough you'll drop it. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove it from the clamp and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, begin the process of actually creating the necklace. I put the pieces back up here to uh, my craft table and uh, what I'm going to do now is take a loop and insert that loop through the hole we created at the top of the head. And uh, I've gone ahead and picked out a nice silver chain uh, to put on, on the loop after we get it through. So with that, you're going to need uh, some needle nose pliers to go ahead and spread this loop out a little bit so you can get it through the hole. So go ahead and take your loop and open it up a little bit and go ahead and insert it through the hole you created at the top of the head. And uh, then what we'll need to do is go ahead and close it back up. This loop is actually just a little bit big. Uh, if I had a smaller one, I'll probably put a smaller one on it. So, there we've gone ahead and we've got the uh, loop inserted through the hole at the top. Now all we have to do is go ahead and take our chain and uh, pass our chain through the loop and uh, we'll have a nice little necklace there. So go ahead and open this chain up. Chain through the loop. I'm going to have to close that loop up a little tighter too. It's a little bit loose. Take my needle nose pliers here and go ahead and tighten this loop up a little bit. Make sure it's good and tight so the chain don't come off. And uh, there you have it. Nice little uh, piece of jewelry that you can give as a gift. Um, again, you can use diff any kind of coin that you want. The half dollar, uh, the eagle on the back of a half dollar makes a really great presentation like this. Uh, go ahead and go on the web and do a Google search for uh, cut coin jewelry. And you'll see a lot of examples of all the detail that you can get into when you're creating this type of jewelry. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And uh, thanks for stopping by the Scroll Saw Workshop. Remember to stop by uh, the Scroll Saw Workshop and look for all the latest patterns at uh, www.scrollsawworkshop.blogspot.com. We'll see you in the next video.